when you're talking about explosive detection with the Smith's detection x-ray system, again, it has the ability to automatically detect organic-based explosives, not inorganic-based explosives. But the other issue with this system is that depending on the amount of clutter and, and things that are in the bag, an explosive can potentially be blocked by a higher ZEF or higher density material, and you won't get an automatic detection for that. So again, going back to what we told you before, it's extremely important to understand that the automatic detection is not a 100% detection. It's just there to assist you. So when it is there, you can utilize it, but you always should be looking for the components of an improvised explosive device, the battery wire, the switch, the detonator, and explosive. Now, the other problem that they have with this detection capability is built into the software is a hidden size cutoff. Now, I don't know why they do this. It actually makes no sense. But if you start looking at it from the perspective of mail screening, very small amounts of explosives have the potential to kill the individual who's opening that mail device. And the cutoff on these systems is very much in the range of where, where it's cutting off. That amount of explosives can easily kill the individual opening that mail device. So again, on mail screening, it's very important to realize that not all explosives are going to get an alarm or red box because of this hidden size cutoff, and we're going to demonstrate that for you. So we have had several different samples of a material called Delrin. Delrin is a perfect simulant for explosives on these x-ray systems. It falls right within the range where we see um, where they're looking for the explosives. And we're actually using Delwin rods, which are 1.25 inches in diameter, which is the same diameter as a stick of dynamite. So we should be able to detect these. But what we've done is we've went down from 7, 6, 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, and 3 inches lengths um, in the same diameter to kind of see where this cutoff is actually at in the Smith's detection system. So I'll go ahead and start the belt. And what we'll do is we'll use the tray, and we'll, we'll actually use the Smith's tray and we'll run these through the system to see where we're detecting and where we're potentially not detecting. So the first one that went through there, which was the seven inch one, we got a detection, no problem. Okay, we'll clear that, we'll bring it out to the other side. We'll now take the six inch one, we'll place it into our bin, and we'll run it through to see if we get to detection. It worked. Six inches was detected by the system. Now remember, this is the exact same material, exact same diameter. Only thing that we're varying is the actual length of it to see if the automatic detection is going to start cutting off its ability to detect based on a length or size of the material. So this one detected. We'll go to the next size, which is five inches in length. And we'll run this one through the system. And again, the system automatically de detected now at five inches, so we'll keep going. We're now going to go down to 4.5 inches. Test this length. Bam, we got a detection. So all the way down to 4.5 inches, we have 100% detection. We're doing great. Now we're going to go down to four inches. Now again, these, these links I'm showing you, if, if you are opening mail, you're dead with this amount of explosives, okay? Four inches, automatically detected, no problem. We'll keep going down. We're now down to 3.5 inches. We'll run this through the x-ray system. No detection, okay? So I already know this. This is pretty much where you're gonna stop detecting on these systems at the center of the belt. It's around 3.5 inches. The actual uh, distance gets, uh, the size gets much larger that it won't detect as you move to the far side away from the generator on these systems because it's a single generator x-ray system. So it's actually, depending on where you put it on the belt, how effective um, this size discrimination or size cutoff is. But for, for, for your knowledge base, anywhere around 3.5 inches in length, 1.25 inches of diameter, these systems will cut off detection of explosives. Now they don't tell you this. This isn't in the manual, it's not nowhere, and even TSA tries to classify this as threat mass, but anybody can figure this out. It's not hard to do. And anybody that has a basic level of knowledge and understands explosives can figure this out. So can terrorists, okay? It's not rocket science. 
And in fact, if you think about it, the U.S. Marshal Service sells their x-ray machines on GSA auction with your actual software on it. So it's very easy for somebody to buy your technology and then evaluate your technology and then figure out what your systems can and cannot do. But for your application, you need to make sure that you understand that your x-ray system is limited in what it can detect for explosives, okay? Until such time as you can get a better technology in place that can pick up these smaller amounts of explosives, um, you're going to have to deal with it the way it is. Now, there is an option, and the option is, is we change the detection class to a detection class called 25. Now, on detection class 25, you're going to get much smaller explosives detected, but your, your false alarm rate is going to be extremely high um, for um, explosive objects. So it's kind of weighing the good with the bad and figure out which risk you want to accept. But know when you're screening mail, smaller amounts of explosives will not alarm. You have to be looking for all the components of an improvised explosive device to identify it in an x-ray image.